Hi everyone, Brandon over here at Fuzzy Walls Mastering. And for all you drummers out there that are curious about the newest edition of the Iron Cobra pedal from Tama, this one's for you. And make sure you stay tuned because I'm going to directly compare this thing to the DW5000 that I've had for years. Let's get into it. As many of you guys already know, there are a ton of single chain driven kick pedals out there to choose from, but I happen to have had a Iron Cobra double pedal years ago, but I moved into using a single pedal again and I went to a DW5000, which I really liked, but it's been years and I wanted to see what the new Iron Cobra from Tama was all about. To break it down further, I ended up getting a Tama Iron Cobra 900 Rolling Glide pedal. Tama also offers this in a power glide, and the main difference here is the power glide has an offset shaped sprocket, while the rolling glide has a round sprocket, which is a lot more like the DW5000 that I've been using. The idea of the power glide having an offset shaped sprocket is to offer more speed and power at the end of the stroke, but I kind of like to use my playing to control that, and I happen to be kind of a heavy stomper anyways, so I didn't feel like I needed that assistance. This pedal ended up costing me a cool $229 and came in this really nice heavy duty carrying case. After getting the pedal out, I decided to just go ahead and hook it up to my kick drum with absolutely no adjustments. I wanted to see how it played right out of the box. I immediately noticed the parrot clamp connected to my kick drum hoop very easily and securely. And it was also hard to not notice the beater on this thing. Take a look at that. This beater head creates a powerful and clean tight punch. Some of the unique features of this pedal that are responsible for the feel would include the Cobra coil, which is basically a spring underneath the footboard that helps the footboard return to the starting position faster or until a foot stops it, the swivel spring tight, which keeps the spring itself in a straight line, and there are a few other unique features to the Iron Cobra like the Vera Pitch beater holder, the Speedo ring, and the hinge guard block. In regards to feel, straight out of the box, this Iron Cobra was very smooth and actually faster to the kick head than I even preferred. I tend to be a little bit heavy footed, so I actually had to adjust to this as I played. This would be ideal for players that are all about efficiency, especially because that Cobra coil helps bring everything back so quickly. I think that that might actually work best for like a heel down player, but not me. My technique's probably bad and I don't care. Now I wasn't totally surprised by this, but when I was able to compare the DW5000 to this Iron Cobra side by side, I noticed some obvious differences. First of all, the length of the beater stem was set shorter than I had on the DW, and I had a tiny weight on the DW stem about halfway up. Yeah, yeah, I know the stem length on a kick pedal out of the box is kind of like, duh, it's not going to be the right thing. But I mean, I really wanted to see what this thing was like straight out of the box. After adding that little weight and extending the stem, the feel was actually very close to the DW. But after playing a little while with just those changes, I did end up adjusting the Vera Pitch beater holder so the beater didn't come back quite as far because I was just trying to replicate what I had in the DW. And I also tightened the spring tension just a little bit using the swivel spring tight. That was really about it in terms of adjustments to the pedal. I felt like I had it where I wanted it and it was just time to get used to the pedal. This didn't take long at all. Within two rehearsals, I was right where I needed to be. Any slight differences my foot brain had adjusted to. This pedal is powerful, fast, and very easy to get dialed in. In fact, for players that really like to take the time and meticulously adjust all those things to get the pedal completely dialed in, this thing would be perfect for you. Now, if you're anything like me, you just wanna make a couple quick adjustments and start getting used to the new gear. But I really appreciate what Tama did here in supplying us with all these options. I may end up switching the beater head at some point because I do have a bit of a heavy foot and play a lot of different styles, but I haven't bailed on it quite yet. For the price, this was a great purchase. It ended up surpassing my expectations mainly due to what seemed like endless adjustment options plus great natural feel. Not to mention it was under 250 bucks. I'm a happy camper and I would definitely recommend it. Now, since I had been using the DW5000, which is so popular and is a very widely used kick drum pedal, I figured it would be very beneficial for everyone out there to compare the Iron Cobra to that DW. Quick disclaimer here, the DW5000 kick pedal that I'm using is not their newest version. First of all, they're both great pedals, ready to go for the professional drummer, whether they're doing stuff in the studio or out gigging. Aside from some of those unique features that I mentioned about the Iron Cobra earlier, something I noticed when comparing these is that on the spring tension adjustment bit, 
The DW has numbered lines behind the spring and the Iron Cobra has indentations to use, which I do feel takes some guesswork out of things when making and remaking adjustments and can be done by feel alone. The Iron Cobra swivel spring tight lets this part move to stay straight in line, but the DW does not have that. They both have the ability to adjust the beater angle and even though the Iron Cobra has more range, the DW is easier to adjust in my opinion. The DW has spurs and one piece of Velcro on the bottom, which over years of gigging has gotten a bit, uh, hairy. While the Iron Cobra has rubber in two spots on the bottom and no spurs. I noticed no movement on the kick drum when using either one, but in the past with the DW, if I had one of those spurs misaligned, then the kick could move in the corresponding way. But this could easily be fixed with a gig rug that has a block for the kick or just good kick spurs, so no big deal. But the Iron Cobra definitely has a better clamp, or in other words, how it connects to the bass drum hoop. Actually, something I've never been a fan of is the clamp on the DW, because if that top piece isn't tightened properly, and it will loosen over time, the whole clamping system can fail. I also wanted to mention that the Iron Cobra does feel slightly heavier and a bit more solidly built, generally speaking. Something that sort of surprised me was I ended up liking the gig bag that the DW came in originally over the big heavy duty case that the Tama came in. At first it really seemed like a great selling point for Tama, but after moving my drums a few times I found that it was just unnecessary. I mean, if you are touring, or maybe have some untrustworthy people handling your equipment. I guess this could be a plus. But the DW gig bag has a shoulder strap, so I was able to put my cymbal backpack on, put that DW gig bag over my shoulder, and still have both hands free. For whatever. In conclusion, these are both great pedals, but I'd have to say that I do prefer the Iron Cobra, not only for its sturdy construction, better clamp, and tons of adjustment options, but the feel is a bit more seamless, smooth, and it has fantastic power and control. Well, there you have it. If you are on the fence about buying the Iron Cobra 900 Rolling Glide from Tama, I hope this helped. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like, and please remember to subscribe to the Fuzzy Walls channel. Anything you'd like to add, feel free to leave a comment. And when that final mix is ready for mastering, Fuzzy Walls is standing by.